Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. Dan Howell, Mr. Dan is no longer on fire, as I'm now going to call you, because you've changed your name to Dan Howell from Dan is not on fire, which is your brand name. Maybe you want to take a leaf out of my book and, oh my god, that's it, that is a, great. But maybe you do want to take a leaf out of my book and realise that to do a Lord Guring, buy a few more books. Yes, this is what revision does to you. I've been revising since about nine o'clock this morning. It's now half five. I've had a lunch break, that's about it. And I've been doing the same topic pretty much all day. So it's now time for a bit of Ribena. A YouTube video. That sounds about right. Anyway, hello, welcome back. Welcome to this week's video, which, firstly, this is probably one of the last times that you're gonna see this spectacular room because, well, yeah, I'm leaving soon. And I've learned one thing this year is actually how small this room is, which is a medium sized room, it's not a small room, apart from the university doesn't seem to do small rooms, they only seem to do medium or large. So this is a medium room, so it may as well be a small room, plus I've got a bathroom, which makes it smaller and kind of a walk-in wardrobe thing, but I can't walk in that. And I've realised how small this room is, probably not by my own, wow. I've noticed really because I found out that I've got a new addiction or compulsion. Well, yeah. As you all know, I am a collector. I collect planes and trains and tag it DVDs. I've watched them at least. But I found out that I've started collecting something new, which is good. It's probably one of the best addictions you could have. It's good for the brain, good for the mind. I've started buying books. Fact, I have not counted yet how many books I have here at university. I've left some at home. I've left three at home. So I didn't actually realize how many books I've got until I was planning on doing this video anyway. And now I've just got out a load of books and I've realised that I'm getting some more within the next week. So today, what I thought I'd do is actually run through every book that I have bought for university in some way. I probably should keep a running commentary on how many books that I've actually brought. So, notepad. So... Tort Law Concentrate Revision Book, Tort Law Questions and Acts, Tort Law Nicholas McBride and Bagshaw, Kidner's Case Book on Torts, yeah, case books, don't know how to describe a case book apart from got a load of cases in, and Torts by Paula Gillica, the Sweet and Maxwell edition, Contract, Torts and Restitution, Statutes Book, Law of Contract, Revision, Question and Answers Book, Law of Contract Revision Book, Case book on contract law. Law of contract by MacDonald, who is my lecturer in contract. One of their favourites is Treatle, the law of contract. It's Cheshire Five Foot and Firmest or Firmston's Law of Contract, by 15th edition by Michael Firmston. Euro McKendrick, another textbook. So there alone I have four contract textbooks. EU Law, Questions and Answers. EU Law. EU law case book, EU law more revision, essentials of EU law, EU legislation, EU text cases and materials, my textbook. EU law I think is the only subject where I only have one textbook for. Public law is probably one of my main interests at university, though it's probably not the most exciting subject. I also do some things outside of university with public law, so it's quite interesting really. Constitutional administrative law revision book. Oh yeah. 
public law also goes under constitutional administrative law. Public law, other revision book, which is the one I'm currently revising from. Public law Q&A. Constitutional administrative law, Hilaire Barnett, ninth edition. The first law book that I got for university. Also, I don't actually need it for my course because the Webley and Samuels one is the one that I need, but actually this one explains everything better. Public Law, Webley and Samuels complete text cases and materials, looks very similar to the EU one made by the same people. Public Law and Human Rights, Public Law in a Multi-Layered Constitution, it's a text, well, journal book about different points and aspects of public law. Probably the oldest in my collection, started in 1972, is the Yardley Source Book of Administrative Law, second edition. The Buttersworth one. It's probably one of my favourites as well to read because it covers judicial review very, very well. And one more thing, which is a specialist book, is the European Convention on Human Rights, third edition by Jacobson White. Probably in the shortest in my collection is my human rights bit. I don't actually study human rights as such, but I do a thing called human rights mooting where I do speeches and that about human rights so I have to have some human rights stuff so I've got human rights nutshells third edition and human rights and civil liberty this one is probably the only subject so far where I've got my only books second hand and I've not had any new books for the collection we are on to my international law books I don't actually study it at all but it's where my interest in law actually lies what I have is NATO, which is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization Handbook, International Relations, The Key Concepts, my International Law Textbook, The Contemporary Conflict, The Contemporary Law of Armed Conflict, the second edition by Leslie C. Green. If you don't know, you probably don't know, but my general interest in law is in international law and especially armed conflict laws, both internal and beyond frontiers. The next books are the ones that I use generally and are my general law books. Oxford Dictionary of Law, The English Legal Process, Legal System and Skills, and Your Rights to Do with Law. Right, the next section is my US law books, and these have been used mainly in my politics bits, but I've also got a very, interest, a very strong interest in American law, particularly American federal law. So I have the landmark decisions of the US Supreme Court and the Supreme Court Essential History. Both of these, of course, have appeared in my Washington DC What I Brought Back video. Now what you can't see for this is that this pile finishes just below the camera. I suppose I'd better make a start on this with the big one. A People's History of the United States, Howard Zinn. Somebody wrote a book called The Contours of American Politics. Sounds very similar to the course that I'm doing in name. In fact, it's exactly the same. So we weren't told that we needed this book, but if you ever hear of a book called The Contours of American Politics, and your course is called The Contours of American Politics, and it happens to be by a lecturer at your university, put two and two together and buy it. Then I've got the United States Congress, the United States and the origins of the Cold War, JFK and Vietnam, revolution in America, Britain and the colonies, 1763 to 1776, of course the start of America, American politics, the rough guide thing, also by John Roper, so it's very useful for my course. American Studies Second Edition, which is again a load of journals. More journals in America Transformed, and it goes about the changes in the last century about America and American society. Uh, the American Political System, an introductory reading, which again is more journals into the American political system. The Post American World, which is the American politics and how it affects the rest of the world, mainly looking at the BRICS and the new American militarism which it talks about America and the military and how America's military is so great pretty much. Would you believe it? I've still got two more books to go here and then I need to count the three at home as well. So what I've got here but these are for next year is criminal law which is a revision guide about criminal law, equity 
property and trusts, which again is another revision guide. And then I need to add the other three because I've got land, equity and trust and criminal law textbooks at home. I've got 58 books at university. Anyway, I oh, actually what I am going to do before I finish is prove to you one thing. When you come to university, you come because you're going to do a lot of reading. If you haven't guessed by now. Into a lot of subjects that you are interested in. Now, university comes with a big thing called a library. Which university is basically a group of buildings around a library where students go to. Or should be. I don't spend much time in the library for getting out books. As you've probably gathered, I don't need to. <laughs> well, I do. I do get a lot of books out. In fact, I got out four. Four books this last week in public law alone. I've got some more books here. Urban Change. To Seek America, which is about the ethnic... Uh, way of America and exploring urban America for my American studies exam and immigration and asylum law for my human rights stuff just to prove that I do go down to the library as well. There is 63 books in my room. If you would like to come to the uh, library of law, <laughs> God what am I doing? Yes I now have a law library, uh, the times are open whenever you fancy, ha ha ha. Basically if your name is Jan and you do a channel called Emothic you can use the library whenever you want. Basically a lot of these books will be staying at home next year as well. And I will be keeping them because I've actually got to go and do some stuff after I've done my degree in order to qualify for anything. Anyway I hope you have enjoyed this video long one it's going to take me a lot of time to edit this tonight which is quite worrying because I've actually got to get this video up tonight and if you have enjoyed this video please make sure you give it a like down below or if you just like the actual amount of books that I've bought if you are new to this channel and haven't gone clinically insane because of the amount of books that I have bought yet please subscribe down below and also click that notification there's a bell notification bar that tells you when I upload a new video. Uh, along with that, I have Twitter and Snapchat. They're now up in the corner. You can see them, you can follow me on Twitter and you can add me on Snapchat. Uh, when you follow me on Twitter, I'm either complaining about the government at the moment because it's election time, the amount of law work that I need to do, the amount of American studies work I need to do, retweet in American studies at Swansea University, retweet in some law stuff, and of course, last time's video, which was two weeks ago, will be up as well. Make sure you uh, click on that. You can watch that at the end. There's a little ending screen. <sighs> We're done. It's a long video. Hope you've enjoyed. Right, I'm ending this video now. See you soon. Goodbye. Why don't you click subscribe? Make sure you check out last week's video. Why not follow me on Twitter or Snapchat?